Cicada is an easy, retired Windows CTF challenge on Hack the Box, and in this video I'll show you how to get through the tasks in the guided mode so that you can own the box. The Cicada machine tests our skills on Windows and AD enumeration techniques to find the many users on the domain controller and their passwords. Once we have a user that can log into the system, we will be challenged with escalating our privileges to administrator by abusing the over-permissive privileges that our user has. With that out of the way, let's spawn our machine and get started. With the machine spawned, the first thing I like to do once we have the IP address is put it in the etc host file so we can have cicada.htv resolved to our machine IP address. So let's open up the host file in a text editor and then we can paste the IP address into the host file and have cicada.htv resolved to that IP address. And we're going to save this file as a sudo user. And now whenever we reference cicada.htb is going to resolve to the IP address 10.10.11.35. Next, let's find out what ports are open on the Cicada box by using nmap. Our first nmap scan is just going to figure out the ports that we can access. And once we have our list of ports that are open, we can enumerate them further to find out more information about the box. So to discover all TCP ports, we can run this command, which is just going to quickly scan all possible TCP ports and save all of the nmap file types to nmap all tcp in my scans folder. Once that scan completes, we see the many ports that are open on the server. We already know that this is a Windows server because Hack the Box told us, but if we didn't, then just by looking at the ports that are open, we should be able to determine that this is most likely a Windows server, and more specifically, a domain controller. We can tell this because port 88 by default is the port for Kerberos, and we can see that the service running is Kerberos-sec, and Kerberos is the authentication service used in Active Directory. We also have ports 135, 139, and 445 open, which are all common Windows ports for RPC, NetBIOS, and SMB respectively. And the last dead giveaways are port 636 for LDAP and port 5985 for WinRM. Let's confirm this hypothesis by doing some service enumeration on those discovered ports by running the nmap command sudo nmap cicada.htv dash p and then all of the ports that we discovered dash sc dash sv and then we're going to save the results to our scans folder as nmap dash tcp scans. So this command is just taking all of those discovered ports and running the default nmap scripts against them with the dash sc argument and we're also performing service enumeration with the dash sv argument. Once this completes, we should see some helpful information confirming that this machine is in fact a Windows domain controller, specifically by looking at the DNS of cicada-dc.cicada.htv. If we check back on our tasks and hack the box, we see that the first question asks us what the non-default SMB share that is readable with guest access is on Cicada. So to enumerate the SMB shares of a Windows server without any credentials, we can use the SMB client Linux command. If we run SMB client dash capital N dash capital L dash dash cicada dot htv, we can get a list of all the public SMB shares. The dash capital N flag is going to use a null session, aka anonymous or guest access, and the dash capital L flag is going to try and list all of the shares that are available on the Cicada machine. After running that command, we see that we have two non-default shares of dev and hr. We can first try connecting to the dev share by running the command SMB client slash slash cicada dot htv slash dev provide it no password. And we see we are able to connect to the share, but if we try and list out anything in the directory, we get access denied. So let's exit out of that and let's try the HR share by running the same command, except this time we're going to replace dev with HR. And again, no password. And now when we list out what's on the share, we see that we have a new file called notice from hr.txt. We can download this file from the share to our Linux attack box by typing get notice from hr.txt and then the directory where we want to save the file. In this case, I'm just going to save it as hr.txt. And because the file has spaces in it, make sure that it is in quotes. If we open up this file in a text editor, we see that we have a message for new hires from Cicada Corp and we discover that they're using a default password of this string here. So having this default password is definitely good to know, but right now we don't have any users to try this password against. So we're going to need to figure out those users first. But quickly, let's go back to our tasks on Hack the Box and fill out what we know so far. We've gathered that the non-default SMB share is HR, so we can enter that in. And we also know that the name of the file found in the HR share is notice from hr.txt. All right, now let's start looking for some users that could be using that default password. When I initially tried this box, I tried brute forcing common usernames with that default password that we discovered using a tool called Kerbrute, but this method did not get me anywhere. Something that I didn't put together at the time was that since this machine was a domain controller on a Windows AD network, we could use the tool lookupsid.py from Impacket to enumerate users on the domain. I had never used this tool prior to this machine, and to be honest, my Active Directory enumeration and exploitation is a little underdeveloped, so this was a great learning experience. 
We can enumerate domain users using lookup SID by using the command python3 opt in packet examples lookup SID.py and then the name of the domain at symbol and then the IP address of the domain controller. So in our case, the domain will be cicada.htb and then the domain controller is the IP address of the machine, which is 10.10.11.35. When it prompts for a password, you can just hit enter. And this command is going to come back with a bunch of users and groups, but we only really care about the domain users in this list. So anything with a first name dot last name. So it looks like they're grouped up at the bottom here. We can go ahead and copy these lines and put them in a text file. I'm gonna call it users.txt. And once you paste them in this text file, we can clean it up a bit so that we only have the username of each user. Once that is all said and done, we should have five users here. And now with our users.txt file, we can try out the default password against each one of these users by using the beloved tool crackmapexec. And we can do this by running crackmapexec smb cicada.htb and then use dash u to specify our users.txt file. And then we're gonna use dash p to specify the default password that we found earlier in that hr.txt file as well. And make sure you put that default password in single quotes. So what this command is doing is attempting to authenticate as every user in our users.txt file using that default password from the hr file against the smb protocol. Once that command finishes running, we should see that the michael.writesin user is using that default password. So let's go ahead and answer that task on the hack the box site real quick. After we answer the question about the default password, we see the next question is asking who left their password in the Active Directory metadata. So to grab the Active Directory metadata, we're going to need to use a pair of valid credentials like the ones we just gathered and the tool enum for Linux. We can do authenticated user enumeration using enum for Linux by running the command enum for Linux dash capital U for user enumeration dash lowercase u and the user we want to sign in as dash lowercase p and our default password and then specifying cicada.htb as the domain controller. And once this finishes, we should see all of the users on cicada.htb as well as a description for each user. And it turns out that the user David or Elias has the description of his password, just in case he forgets. So let's go ahead and answer task four on the hack the box site, because we now know that David or Elias has his password in Active Directory metadata. This will open up task five, which is asking us what PowerShell script is located in the dev share. And using context clues, we can kind of put together that the David or Elias user that we now have credentials for can probably access that dev share from earlier. So to access that dev share as the David or Elias user, we can run SMB client dash capital U David or Elias dash dash cicada.htb slash dev. And when it prompts us for a password, we can use the password that we found in the metadata and just paste that in. And now when we list the directory, we see that we have backup script.ps1 on the dev share. We can go ahead and download that to our attack box by running get backup script.ps1 and then wherever we want to save that backup.ps1 file. Let's open up this backup.ps1 file in a text editor. And looking at the contents of this script, we see that the emily.oscars user has a password of this string right here. So back on hack the box, we can answer the question of what PowerShell script was on the dev share, as well as what Emily Oscar's user's password was. And the next step is submitting the user flag. So it looks like we can finally use those credentials that we have to access a shell on the Cicada server. If we recall back to our nmap scan, we saw that port 5985 was open. This is the port for WinRM, which is the Windows Remote Management Protocol. We can use the Linux tool Evil WinRM to authenticate over this port as our Emily user. To do that, we just have to run the command evil-winrm-icicada.htb dash u emily dot oscars and finally dash p and the string of emily's password it looks like we've authenticated and we are in emily's documents folder so if we move on over to her desktop and list it out we see that we have a user.txt file which we can go ahead and cat and get the user flag let's submit this user flag on hack the box so we can figure out what our next task is all right, now that we can run commands on the Cicada server, we are told that we're going to want to figure out what dangerous privilege our Emily user has. So to do that in our evil WinRM session, we can type whoami slash priv. And here we see that the very first privilege in our list is the SE backup privilege. The SE backup privilege allows us to traverse any folder, copy any file, and even create backups of the SAM and system registry hives, which will give us the NTLM hash of every user on the server. To create these backups, we can run the commands reg save hklm system, system.save and this will save the system registry 
And then similarly, we're going to run regsave hklm sam, sam.save, which is going to save the sam hive. With these two backup files now created, we can copy them over to our attack box by using SMB client. And we can do that by running SMB client dash capital U emily.oscars and then accessing the C drive on the cicada.htb server and then put in the password for emily.oscars. We're gonna to wanna to make our way to Emily's desktop where we saved those backup files. And once we're here, we can first save the SAM file by doing a get sam.save and then the directory where we want to save the SAM file to. And then we're going to do the same thing for the system.save file. Once we have these two files on our attack box, we can use the impacket tool secretsdump.py to get every ntlm hash on the save files. To do this, let's run the command python3 user share doc python3 dash impacket examples secretsdump.py and then we're going to use dash sam and specify the sam.save file as well as dash system and specify our system.save file and then append the local argument as well. Once this finishes running, we see that the administrator user's hash was in the save files, and it will be the 32 characters after the last colon right here. With that administrator password hash, we can attempt a pass the hash attack using evilwinrm to authenticate as the administrator user. Let's do this by running the command evilwinrm i cicadahtb u administrator and then dash capital H for the hash and then paste in that 32 character string that I pointed out earlier. This command should run successfully and we can go to the administrator's desktop real quick. And once we list out the desktop, we see that we have root.txt. We can cat out that root.txt file and copy and paste it into our hack the box task. For task eight, we found out that the dangerous privilege that the Emily Oscar user has access to was SE backup privilege. And then we found out through running secretsdump.py that the administrator NTLM hash was that 32 character string starting with 2b. And lastly, we can submit the root flag that was on the administrator's desktop in the last task of the box. Congratulations, you have just owned Cicada on Hack the Box. If you enjoyed this video or found it useful, please leave a like because it helps the channel out a lot, and subscribe for more cybersecurity content. If you want to talk about cybersecurity, feel free to leave a comment on this video, or join my Discord to reach me and the rest of the community. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.